Hi, this is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop, and we're back here on the uh, milling machine. Today, we're going to remove some of the components for the uh, power feed, like the automatic disengagement and maybe this guy. We'll get these rods and stuff out of here because we need to get this thing off. Obviously, because that's no good. So, start by taking off the depth gauge. There's just two Phillips head screws. Hold that on. Screws back in so I don't lose them. Okay, now there's a kind of a pivoting point that's held in by this uh, set screw. So when this cams over, this is supposed to push this down. This, as the stop hits this, pushes that, and it's supposed to kick this guy out. This, obviously, is all broken, so we'll take it off. And we'll start with the little, there's a little nut on the bottom of this. Get it off. Okay. See, it's a little stud. Get off to the side. Now we'll take out the pivot. I pre loosened some of these just so you wouldn't have to watch me fight stuff like that pull it out enough and here is the cam for that so that comes down hits this pushes that up it's adjustable with that stud a little bit okay now I need to get this block off there Looks like that's part of this. Give it just a tap. Probably have to take this part off to get that guy off. In the meantime, we'll take the rest of this off. There's a stop up here. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that in. Now get this guy out. There is a ring this quill down. The quill's stiff. I wanna look at that too. And take off this snap ring right here. So our quill adjustments up. screwdriver okay there's that one and there's a snap ring underneath it that's exactly identical that seems that seems odd to me but again this machine's been through a few hands come on Okay. 
These guys are up. Off of that. So, now, don't set screw holding that in. Hmm. Let me take a look at this. I'm going to go grab a wire brush and clean some of this stuff up to you real quick, and I'll bring you back. Okay, so I got some stuff sprayed up. We're going to remove... I forget where I was. We'll take this stuff off. So, take off this little cover here. It's got a... Surprisingly, a set screw on that side a flathead one on this side not sure why they did that but get this off see what that gets us okay. There we go. There's a little keyway in there. The keys to that shaft. Um, we're gonna have to get that keyway out. There's a hole for a detent ball in here as well. So, try to grab that key. Not a good place to, to grab. It's very small. There we go. So now, I wouldn't think there'd be anything holding this guy on. All right. Oh. Loosen this guy. Loosen this guy. Give it a wiggle. I'm wiggling it just to see if there's any kind of like spring tension behind it. Let me know if something's about to launch. So I wouldn't think so with this piece. When we go to take this part off on the side with this bent dog ear, there's a pretty good sized spring in there. Okay, this is pulling away. Clean up that shaft and there we go. That's very, very hard to move in there really bound up really galled so the added strain from that could very well put stress on it that broke this stuff so we'll tear this guy apart on the bench and see what parts we need for it now i don't know if i need to take this guy out there's a plunger in there very slippery okay. this is the bottom part that that pivoting thing comes in contact with pushes this up there's a plastic bushing right there There's a part in there, it's the same size as that, but it's not, there's a spring in there. So, I'm sure 
couldn't get it apart here. Yeah, oh. There we go. That looks good. That's exactly how it should look. You can see the spring in there. So obviously we're gonna need this whole piece. That mystery is solved. Stay in there stuff. Okay, um, now it's just this part. I took out the set screw here. There's some kind of a, I don't know if it's a pin. I hope it's not an Allen or a set screw because when I took this apart, the end of it is all shiny and it didn't look like it, you know, was hexagonal anymore. Like someone attempted to extract it when this broke and uh, stripped it out. So just so you don't have to see me fight that forever, I'm going to try to get that out and I'll bring you back afterwards when I drop this out and we remove this. So I'll bring you back. Okay, and we're back. And that actually wasn't a set screw in there. It was just this weird detent ball thing that came right out. Um, it looks really wore out. They call it a pivot, some kind of pivot in the book. It's super cheap. It's like six bucks. I'm going to go ahead and get a new one. So I got that out. And all that was up there, if I can find it here, was uh, this guy. And the other side of that pivot went in there, and that's what captured that in there. Then it's dropped off. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Some of the... Uh, Threads are damaged up top there. They got cleaned up after I ran the uh, measuring thing up there. And that was on the back. You can clock this thing 90 degrees, or not 90, 180 with that slot. And all the damage was in the back, like when someone was in this before, they messed it up and just flip, flipped it around, so. Because these dials, were not fun to get off those messed up threads really because i didn't want to put a pair of vice grips or anything on them so yeah these two snap rings so pretty much all the power feed stuff's off there's still let me pick you up here this piece there's a big spring underneath this arm there's this arm a washer i back that out just a little bit but this cover compresses against this compresses against that spring to get the snap back so i'm not going to take that off right now the power feed did work you just had to hold this so i'll, I'll take it off when i have the part for that because there's a lot of little things in there so yeah and this is the re reverse for the uh quill feed there's of course your feed rate lever your engagement. So we've got all those parts off and clean them up. Uh, I mentioned this bolt before. These bolts are special. They have a, just like a bridge port, they have a square back and they fit into a notch in the back of the head. So I'm going to go ahead and get one of those two, probably two. And we'll have to pull the head off to replace those. But that's not super bad. I'll do that before I put the motor and everything back on. So. Now what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to go through and do kind of an audit on how much money it's going to take to replace everything to this point. Um, everything else works fine, nice and smooth. Uh, I'll do some inspection stuff in here too. Some of the gears, there's a worm gear up there. So I'll pull all these covers off and check all that. As far as those two components, I know I was doing some brief looking the other day and the brake, the brake shoes are expensive. They're like 200 bucks. So I got to think about that. So yeah, the next video, we'll see about uh, 
getting the parts for it. This is a, it had a Kent badge, but this is exactly like this. Uh, it's just a jet. I was going to rename all the videos jet milling machine repair, but then I say Kent milling machine all through it and I don't want to confuse people, but I'd like the video to be as helpful as possible. So we'll see. Or what I'll do is when I do the video where I put everything together back on and test it, it'll be reassembly of the jet milling machine. Uh, something like that. So yeah, got all the power feed stuff stripped off there. That went pretty well. Got the head all stripped off there. And uh, yeah, I'll come at you with a video tomorrow. And it'll probably just be like a January upcoming thing video. And I'll just throw that in there. So this is Adam from Small Town Machine Shop. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And thanks for watching.